Hey guys, this is Gene Jensen. And in this video today, I wanna to talk to you about how I break down a lake in the summertime, specifically a lake I've never been to before. All right, so to start off with, it's summertime, it is hot. I'm on Lake Palestine in, in Texas, and the water temperature is 95.2 degrees. That is blistering hot for a bass. So what happens when, when it gets that hot? Anything 85 and above, the water starts to lose its ability to hold oxygen for the bass to breathe. So the bass are gonna go looking for oxygen. They're gonna do one of three things. They're gonna go deep, they're gonna go find current, or they're gonna go find grass. Grass creates oxygen through photosynthesis. Deep water hole is cooler, so it holds oxygen better, or current, which stirs up the oxygen and, or stirs up the water and creates oxygen. Things that create current are wind, of course, creek channels, river channels, uh, water coming into the, 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 uh, the lake, and boat traffic. Um, boat tra traffic is one of those things that people forget about the most, but that boat traffic, um, yesterday uh, it was a, was a weekend, and the, ba the boats, all the pleasure boats and all the ski boats and everything were stirring up that water, and that creates more oxygen in that upper level. The bass can stay up there longer. So those are the three things that I look for, um, or those are one of the, thing things, the first three things that I look for when I'm trying to figure out where the bass are in the hot water. What you're seeing is, or what I'm seeing, is a lot less bait than I have anywhere else. Um, not seeing anything to look like bass. If I was seeing bass, I'd see them on the bottom or close to the bottom, uh, specifically on my, uh, my regular fish finder and my down imaging. Here I'm just looking for things in the water column. I'm looking for brush piles like that's a stump right there. I'm just kind of scanning for cover for bass. That's what a side imaging is good for. This makes, helps me to pinpoint what type of fish they are. Bass are gonna be located to the bottom. Crappie are gonna be stacked in, 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 in bunches, uh, suspended off the bottom. Bait fish are gonna be suspended like those are right there. Um, and you can make somewhat of an educated guess on what type of fish they are, dependent on how they are positioned um, around on the bottom and around cover and brush and things like that. All right, now we just went past a dock and I like to scan docks as I go past them. Um, sometimes I'll, that's all I'll do is scan docks all day. And this is a dock on the side scan. And if you look off the right side, you can see all these little white spots right here. Well, those white spots are actually the posts from the dock. You can see the shadows from the posts, those long, narrow posts. Now, can you pick the fish out? on these docks. You see this line right here? It's a squiggly line, I know, but you see it's got a little shadow right behind it. That one's got a shadow behind it. This might be a fish, but I don't know. But that one obviously is either a fish or something that's up off the bottom a little bit, and that one is too. So I can pick, pinpoint larger fish that are underneath these docks. I'm not good enough to pinpoint the small ones yet. All right, so if a lake doesn't have any grass, and I know there's grass somewhere on, on, here on Palestine, but I haven't really gone to look for it yet. But if a lake doesn't have grass, and I'm not in an area of a lake where it has uh, obvious current, the first thing I'm gonna go looking for is I'm gonna go look deep. I'm gonna go out over the deep water, and I'm gonna scan with my electronics, and I'm gonna see what depth the majority of the fish are holding at. And it's usually between a five and a 10 foot uh, range somewhere in the water column. Once I find that depth, I go look at points and drop-offs and ledges and things that are on the bottom using my topo map that will hold the fish at that depth. That's what takes so long. That's why I spend a ton of time zigzagging back and forth on points, humps, drop-offs, creek channels, all kinds of stuff looking for bass at whatever depth I feel like they are at. the bait and find the fish. Look at all that bait. That's the most bait that I've seen anywhere I've been. I've seen bait everywhere I've stopped, but that's a ton of it. 
Now, the way you tell it's bait over fish, see the cloudy, see how cloudy it is right here? This right here down here, those are actual fish. If I wanna, if I, if I, if they're big fish, it's gonna be three colors. You're gonna see yellow in the middle, orange, and then blue on the outside. Something like this, but these, you can see there's broken up on them, on the lines. That means that's all bait. It's all broken up. The arch is created by the cone as the baiters, or as the object is going past or going through the cone. These are all bass. Probably not very large bass, but they're, they're larger than the bait fish and they're staying close to and tucked to the bottom and they're on a hump. And you see a couple more, two or three scattered over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually stop and fish this area because it wasn't so shallow that I spooked them. Caught them in about 10 to 12 feet of water, or 12 to 14 feet of water. Last cast and we're out. Yep. So what happened was uh, we finally found some fish, at least something I thought it was bass, and we started to fish it, but there was a pop-up thunderstorm that was to our north. In Texas, typically the, the, the storms travel, um, what, northeast. So we thought that it was just going away, but we checked our phone, it kept getting bigger and bigger, it looked like, looked like it was getting closer. Checked our phone, sure enough, it was coming our direction. So we hauled tail back to the boat uh, to the boathouse, slid, slid the boat in, and just went and waited it out. And it was kind of weird that the, the storm got to where we were fishing and then just kind of dissipated and disappeared. So uh, it's not raining anymore. We're gonna head back out so we can't catch anything. All right, well, we made it back. The wind picked up a little bit. It was a little bit of rough of a ride, but uh, we're back on that spot. Hopefully I can yeah, hopefully I can get them to bite. A lot of times a, a storm like that that runs through um, will change the bite. Sometimes it turns it on, sometimes it doesn't. So we'll see. Definitely coming through some good stuff, man. Feels great. There's one. So it was on the exact same spot. Ready? White bass. Well, it's a bass. Not exactly the species I was going for. Now the hard part, getting them off the hook. These things hurt. Let me get in his lips. <laughs> About to see, him, see Gene scream like a baby. Wow. Not exactly what I was looking for, but it'll do. Woo. Well, uh, because of that thunderstorm last night, we weren't able to fish very much. So uh we i really wasn't able to figure too much out i found that one good school of fish never was able to relocate it because it, when we found it it wasn't really positioned on a piece of cover so i knew it was a nomadic school went back over there after the storm and of course it was gone so we spent the rest of the time that we had trying to find more fish and just didn't get to it so we're back here it's morning um i'm gonna tack it just a little bit different we're gonna look shallow because these fish should have moved shallow to feed during the night and uh, we're just gonna go looking and uh, do a whole lot of fishing this morning before the sun comes up. The key thing to fishing in the morning is, is fish the shade as long as you possibly can, especially in the summertime, because that's where the bass are gonna hang out the longest. <music> Well, we've been out here for, oh, almost two hours and got 
one bite shook off uh so what i did was i moved i that bite was out on main lake and it was a little fish and that's all we got so the thing i did was I, what i call a reset i basically just just threw everything back down on the deck of the boat and we're and a, we just basically did the, the total opposite of what i was doing we're all the way back in the back of the creek we got a lot of grass that's on the bank a lot of cover a lot of bait you can see a lot of bait here standing timber i'm just going to go fish and you know it, it, it gets frustrating but if you don't give up if you just keep searching and keep searching you're going to find something the bass have got to eat and uh you just got to figure out how to catch them so finding fish isn't always easy but it sure is fun down there and it feel real good. I think I got a fish. Good one too. Yes, sir. Get him fast. He'll be bleeding in a minute. There's one. I got one, too. Go ahead. Oh, I got a good one. <laughs> I got one about three and a half. Nope. I want this one right here. Look at this. Whoa! First of all, never give up. It has been a frustrating day. I knew the fish were somewhere. I mean, I knew that we tried shallow, we tried under docks, we tried everywhere. So I said, you know what? We're just gonna try the deepest we dare. And we came out on the main lake. Everything was 20 feet deep to 17 to 20 feet deep. And so tied on a Carolina rig and a drop shot through a Carolina rig up on, the, up on a point and uh major lake, main lake point is what it is and ended up hooking into this son of a gun right here let me release it it's been out of the water for a little while awesome awesome 17 feet deep on a carolina rig all right now let me show you what i'm doing we just caught a couple of fish right here right in that area so and they're deep enough to where i'm not worried about running over them with the boat all this stuff right here is another boat just ran right over our spot so that's boat wash from where he ran thanks a lot buddy um but anyway so what i'm doing is i'm trying to figure out why those fish were holding there and i think it's just because that that spot right there is just a harder bottom if you look right here it gets gets pretty solid solid white right in here this whole thing is just hard bottom and it should be right about here is where we were getting bit so about 19 feet there's your bass right there at 20 feet just looks like little clumps right there on the down imaging but if i go to standard you can see that it's fish one there one there one there so That's what when, that's all I'm doing is just looking for for fish, good size fish, three colors, you know, blue on the outside, then orange. I want to see a yellow on the middle to let me know they're good size fish. And if they're close to the bottom and not stacked up or anything or spread out up high, I'm pretty sure they're bass, and I'm gonna stop and go fishing for them. <clears throat> Spotted bass. Still fun to catch. Had to wait for him to get that whole worm in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
If I hold it out, will it get any bigger? A little bit better. Ah, look at that fish. Come on, stop flopping. I'll get you off. Whew. Hot plate. <laughs> Loving it. Got him? Yep. Somebody got a big fish. Somebody got a big... You're going to let him jump, aren't you? You're going to let that big old horse jump. He's fine pretty good. You need a net? He just got shoulders. Matt's got a fish. Whatever. Yeah, I get the net. Swing him. There we go. Woo -hoo -hoo! <laughs> All right, now let's go over what I basically did the last two days to break down this lake in the summertime. It was very difficult. Um, I knew it would be, so it was kind of expected. And, uh, and I just wanna go over the different places we went to to look for fish on the lake and eventually what we found out. All right, so this is a very zoomed out uh, map of Lake Palestine. This is our home base right here. Um, some of the places we checked on the first day were main lake points. This is another main lake point over here. Then we went and we ran this bank right here, just looking at deep docks. Another hump right here is where we caught that one hybrid bass. And then uh, we, it, you know, the, the storm came, we had to leave and we had to come back and we didn't catch anything after that. Now this morning, what we did was we decided that I was, well, I decided we were gonna go and we were gonna go back in the back of this creek where there's a bunch of grass. And we flipped that grass what seemed like forever. Check some deep docks on the side. So. So for the first 24 hours, basically, I checked deep um, main lake points, main lake points, deep docks, backs of creeks, and I couldn't find anything. And it just blew my mind. So we went further down the lake, and let me zoom over here where it's at. And there was a very predominant point on the lake. And this point, this point stuck out like a sore thumb. I mean, and it looks like a community hole, and it probably is. But we came out here and as we were scanning all throughout the day, the, the majority of the fish, the bait fish and, the, and any of the fish we saw were between 14 and 17 feet deep. There were fish in other parts of the water column, but the majority of the fish were 14 to 17 feet deep. So we stopped, we tied on a Carolina rig. That's kind of my last ditch effort to catch fish bait. And it's something that's always on my, on my deck in the summertime. And we just started dragging a Carolina rig and we almost immediately started catching fish right at the 14 to 17 foot depth. Threw out a marker buoy, fished, fished, fished. We caught some good fish. Went and checked another spot, went back and got lunch. And then this evening we went and we hit another point that stuck out like a sore thumb. This one came off of an island and that's when Matt caught his big four pounder was right about here somewhere. And so that's kind of the things that I look for when I'm breaking down a lake. I'm a point guy. I look for those places in the summertime. I look for those places that stick way out into deep water, that stick out like a sore thumb, and I fish them. Fish are either going to be there or they're not. I check my depth to see what depth most of the fish are at, and I kind of stick with that depth for the rest of the day, unless there's grass. And that's why we came back and checked this grass. Caught one little fish on the grass right here, but that was it. I wish we hadn't caught the fish because we probably wouldn't have spent as much time in that grass. Would have found those fish a little bit earlier. All right, so in a nutshell, that is how I break down a lake in the summertime. It is, um, it's not easy. It's one of those things where you are, you need to be grateful for every bite you get, and every fish you get to the boat because it's a difficult time of the year to fish. Um, remember to look deep, look in places that are gonna hold more oxygen because that's what the bass are gonna need. That's what all the fish are gonna need. And they're all gonna be in that area where they have that oxygen. Well, like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Subscribe to this channel. Show them my videos. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the, on the water, get out and catch some fish and have some fun. Have a great day.